After weeks of speculation, Elon Musk has finally revealed a timeline for the second launch of the Starship. The news comes in the wake of massive upgrades to the launch facilities at SpaceX's Boca Chica testing site. Let's talk about what SpaceX has done to ensure a successful second Starship test, and what upgrades we can expect to see this time around. Can the Starship finally make it to orbit this time? We all vividly remember the excitement of the first launch of the Starship, and now we are eagerly awaiting the upcoming flight, which is happening very soon. Our anticipation comes from both the achievements and challenges we faced during the initial launch. The orbital flight test on April 20th was a significant milestone for SpaceX. Although the first Starship launch ended in an explosion, it was not considered a failure. In fact, SpaceX considered it a success due to the valuable data gathered and the key milestones achieved during the nearly four minute flight. The lessons learned from the maiden launch are guiding the SpaceX team stationed at the Starbase facility as they prepare to face the challenges of the next launch. The immediate focus of the SpaceX team is the second Starship flight, which will feature Booster 9 and Ship 25. To ensure a successful launch, the team is working tirelessly on a series of preparatory tasks. Drawing from the experience of Booster 7 and Ship 24's flight, SpaceX is determined to significantly improve its processes. One important goal is to reduce the duration of the pad flow, which is the period from when the rocket is rolled out into the launch pad to its liftoff. In the past, this process took over a month and concluded several rollbacks for additional modifications. By streamlining this process, SpaceX aims to achieve daily launches from the same pad in the future. All these efforts are in preparation for the second flight. Several modifications are currently underway at the launch site. One major enhancement involves installing a water-cooled steel plate and deluge system under the Orbital Launch Mount, or OM. This adjustment is expected to address the issue of flying debris, which was encountered during the maiden launch when Booster 7 encountered a rock tornado. These modifications will undergo rigorous testing, including the integration of Booster 9 on the orbital launch mount and the full stack integration of Ship 25. Ship 25 will soon undergo a six engine static fire test at the suborbital launch site. This testing phase, lasting around a month, ensures that the updated pad, Booster 9, and the Starship are all in optimal condition for the next high-stakes launch. Both Ship 25 and Booster 9 are prepared for action after successfully completing the first half of their ground tests. After Ship 25's debut at SpaceX's South Texas launch and test facilities in October last year, it has undergone rigorous tests. These tests include pneumatic proof tests, multiple cryogenic proof tests, and several simulated thrust tests. Equipped with six Raptor 2 engines, Ship 25 has the potential to generate up to 1,080 tons of thrust. The decision to leap straight into a six-engine static fire test indicates growing confidence in the current Starship design. Booster 9, although a bit behind in its testing phase, is not far from joining its counterpart. Two months behind Ship 25 in completing its proof tests, Booster 9 was rolled out of its assembly by December last year. It has already completed two partial cryogenic proof tests, during which it was loaded with 1,000 tons of liquid nitrogen to simulate propellant. Booster 9 is now ready for its Raptor engine installations. The design changes and upgrades of Booster 9 have resulted 
in a prolonged outfitting and testing process. One of the major upgrades includes modifications to the combustion-related hardware of the Raptor engines and a complete overhaul of the thrust vector controller responsible for steering the engine. Booster 9's design now incorporates an electrically steered thrust vector controller, or TVC, eliminating the need for complicated hydraulic power units. This development streamlines the exterior of the booster and reduces the complexity of the plumbing required to control and steer the numerous high-performance rocket engines on a single booster. With all 33 engines installed, Booster 9 will undergo thorough testing to ensure that all systems are functioning optimally. SpaceX is also making significant progress in its engine technology. The introduction of the Raptor 3 engine is a perfect example of this. The Raptor 2 engine had consistently achieved 230 tons of thrust by February 2022. Through intricate tuning of engine parameters and design refinements, SpaceX projected that the Raptor 2's output would peak at a minimum of 250 tons of thrust. Furthermore, the production cost of the Raptor 2 was approximately half that of its predecessor, the Raptor 1, which SpaceX had been using from 2018 to 2021. This cost reduction underscores SpaceX's focus on both performance and affordability. Taking a quantum leap from the Raptor 2, the Raptor 3 engine represents a breakthrough in rocket engine technology. This improved engine has surpassed its predecessor by reaching an astounding 350 bars of pressure at a maximum thrust of 269 tons. This significant increase in thrust puts the Raptor 3 in a class of its own. To put it into perspective, the Saturn V rocket, famous for its role in the Apollo moon missions, generated 34.5 million newtons or 7.6 million pounds of thrust. In comparison, the planned Starship Super Heavy Booster, powered by Raptor 3 engines, is expected to deliver an astonishing 2.56 times the thrust of the Saturn V. SpaceX has not provided much information regarding whether the second Starship Orbital Launch will carry a payload. However, documents from the Federal Communications Commission hint at the possibility of a payload. Even NASA seems to be eagerly awaiting the Starship's next test. While repairs continue at the launch site, SpaceX is targeting orbital success this year and plans to launch several Starships before proceeding with the Human Landing System contract. The HLS contract involves numerous tanker vehicles and a crewed lander. It is important to acknowledge the remarkable progress the company has already made in 2023. Although we are not yet halfway through the year, SpaceX has been making history with its audacious goal of launching 100 rockets this year. Achieving this ambitious target requires a launch frequency of approximately one rocket every three to four days, and SpaceX is already rising to the challenge. So far this year, they have successfully launched an impressive 38 rockets, including 35 reliable Falcon 9 rockets, a pair of Falcon Heavies, and, of course, the highly anticipated Starship. Now, if you are wondering about the success rate of these missions, it is quite astonishing. Every single one of these 38 launches has been successful, resulting in a 100% success rate. This is a testament to the expertise, precision, and reliability of the SpaceX team. In terms of launch frequency, SpaceX has been launching a rocket into the sky approximately every four days. To meet their goal of 100 launches this year, they will need to bring that down slightly to an average of 3.65 days between each launch. However, 
given SpaceX's track record, we have full confidence that they will achieve this feat. What do you think? Can SpaceX continue this trend of success? In fact, SpaceX just celebrated its 200th successful orbital class rocket landing recently. SpaceX continues to prove the value in the reusability of orbital class rockets since the start of 2022. SpaceX says around 90% of the last 100 plus missions have been done by flight proven vehicles. When SpaceX first announced that it intended to recover first stages, they were met with many naysayers with either it will never work or they will never see the cost benefits of such an endeavor. Flash forward to mid-2023, and SpaceX is leading the space launch industry with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. And now, competing launch companies are beginning to take the same approach. However, they have quite a bit of catching up to do before they are on the same playing field as SpaceX. The Transporter 8 mission lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4E at 2.35 p.m. Pacific Time on its way to a Sun-synchronous orbit. The Rideshare mission included 72 customer payloads, and many of the companies were sending a payload to space for the very first time. Some of the payloads are connected directly to the SpaceX payload adapter, and others are connected to two space tugs that will deploy their payloads at a later date. All 72 payloads were successfully deployed, with the last deploying just under an hour and a half after launch. B-1071 accomplished its ninth launch and landing, successfully sending the Transporter 8 mission on its way to orbit. This booster has only launched from SpaceX's West Coast launch site, SLC-4E, and shows that SpaceX can maintain a fleet of Falcon 9s at launch sites on the East and West Coast. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about something unusual that SpaceX just did to the Falcon Heavy. Do you think these new upgrades can help Starship get back on track for the Artemis mission? Can SpaceX finally prove that the rocket is close to its final design? Please let us know in the comments section below.